recorded live. Welcome to the Film Podcast. Uh, this is episode 80. Actually, it should be uh, 75.5 because we're uh, trying to work out the kinks. It's been about uh, seven years since the last podcast. Um, so I got a uh, new guest. Uh, Fanboy Will is... Uh, he went off and got married, and uh, he's out in limbo someplace. So uh, hopefully we can get on, get him on here, and uh, he can get involved in this. But uh, I have a new co-host, and his name is uh, Mr. Jeffrey Clark. Uh, his moniker, I guess, according to uh, what he signed up as, is uh, we'll call him Big Dad. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yeah, how you Introduce doing? yourself. I'm doing well. Good, good. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a big daddy. You know, kind of a <laughs> fat guy, fanboy type fella and uh looking forward to getting into this and discussing things we love uh having weekly nerdgasms absolutely now whose idea was this because i don't rem- i legitimately don't recall i think you put the seed in my head i think it was you you had mentioned you missed doing it and i said hey well, well let's do it together oh. i'm down okay sounds sounds right, like fun enough. to me so yeah. Uh, you know, but we're getting old, so our memories may may not be uh, as reliable as they used to be. Oh, speak for yourself. <laughs> so all those brain cells we executed via Budweiser back in the day. Right, exactly. Budweiser and maybe some, uh, some exactly. shots here and there. I'm not sure. But <laughs> no, I'm remember. sure that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our first, uh, the first broadcast was actually uh, February 16th, 2008. So it's wow. practically been a decade, 10 years since uh, we first uh, did our first episode. So you're not necessarily um, attuned to fan films. Uh, you, you're definitely into geekdom of all, yeah. all flavors, and you're a wealth of um, useless information, which, useless which is knowledge. always a good <laughs> But uh, uh, yes. But we'll, we'll try to school you in the fan film ways. Plus, we talked to a lot of you know Hollywood and television, you know, not obviously a a string actors, but a lot of people behind the scenes and everything. So we'll look forward hey, to that. That's that's the people that make it happen. So that's uh yep. the the unsung heroes. Can't all be Absolutely. about the stars, right? Right. Like uh for instance next week uh we'll have Mr. Don Don Glut again uh, on the show. So it'll be good to talk to him again. He's done a lot of uh if you know or do not know, he uh, adapted the novelization The Empire Strikes Back. He did a lot of the 80s cartoons like the Transformers. And what else did he do? Like G.I. Joe. I was going to say, re- oh, G.I. Joe. Yeah, if you read his resume, it's like a, a a veritable watch list of everything we grew up on. Yeah. I think I read he might have done Land of the Lost at one point or some of the, the, the Croft uh, puppet, uh, that that type of show. Back yep. in the day, and it's like, wow, this guy is just, this guy has his handprint all over my childhood. <laughs> Literally. I hope that's it. Hey, now. <laughs> no, he didn't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> through talk show, uh uploaded episodes to talk show, but uh never really used it so we're kinda uh farting around uncharted, with it, uncharted territory. Uh, so we were we were we were talking about the Walking Dead before we started and yeah, um, this season premiere is tonight. That's pretty exciting. My one of my favorite shows. Yeah. And uh you know I did it's spoiler alert. Um do you know the character that uh, the controversial character that the they uh, knocked off. Maybe you don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say. I do, just because you know. Well, if we're talking about uh, uh, the season finale of last season, yeah. So, uh, so again, uh, again, spoiler he alert. Yeah, uh, he hasn't died yet, but right, he looking, got bit. <laughs> looking pretty grim for for Coral, yeah. as Rick calls him. <laughs> <laughs> Coral. <laughs> now you think. Do you think he's going to attack, or do you think there's going to be a yeah. way to? Yeah, no, I you think, think so. I, just from uh, I remember after uh, the season finale, his the actor, uh, uh, his dad was on social media ripping the producers for firing his kid before his 18th birthday after they promised they wanted. <laughs> Does he watch the show? <laughs> Chandler Riggs, yeah, I was like, you, you, you know, you're going to die on this show eventually. So. Right. Right. But, I mean, um, does the day I, you watch uh, the show? Oh yeah, obviously not. <laughs> but yeah, they they had a 
picture up on social media, Instagram or Twitter or something the other day of Chandler Riggs, and he's got all his hair cut off now. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, basically he's well. kind of moving on to other things, I guess. That's but, the yeah. life of an actor. Yeah. That's it. And it's like, hey, you know, some of the characters, he made it, what, eight, eight seasons in. Some of the ma- major ones didn't get out of season two. So. Okay. And then anybody that reads the novel, the graphic novels, knows that these characters, I mean, you're going to get whacked. It's just part of that world. <laughs> it's like Game of yeah. Thrones. Uh, if you get popular, <laughs> now you did. Yeah. yeah. He's the, uh, well, pretty much everybody in The Walking Dead is a Star Trek red shirt. You, you know they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're mentioning uh, what was the other the other show? What, Beware the the Fear the Walking Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, the spinoff. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. that should be oh probably end of May when that comes back on mid season, and uh, yeah. that's that's gotten really good. I've I've really started to enjoy that show after the first season. It was really slow, but it's really picked up. Yeah, I never had any uh, interest in watching it, and I did catch um, the first season this past week. And uh, I, th- I mean, the first season was slow. I just mm. think they uh, they took the time to develop the characters, and it, you know, the payoff was was more interesting. I think because of that fact. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I uh, had mentioned Game of Thrones. It turns out I didn't know this, but uh, the kid that plays Nick on Fear of the Walking Dead, the you know Madison Clark's son, uh, his father uh, is an actor also, Stephen Delane, who's on Game of Thrones. Oh okay. Um, was he, was so, he, play? he was um uh, uh, I don't remember, he's he got killed. Game of Thongs as they like <laughs> Game of Thongs, yeah. Yeah, he was um I'm really spacing on his name here. He was the one that was supposed to be uh he thought he was gonna be the king and anyway, he ended up getting waxed. You still will watch that? Game of Thrones? Well, the last season won't be on until next summer. They delayed it. It was supposed to be in April right. this year, but they've delayed it till next summer. But, uh, you know, they've deviated so much from the books. It's uh, yeah. it's actually really good. I enjoy it, but it's just a lot different than the books. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how they're going to work. Uh, they've, they've announced that Fear of the Walking Dead will have a crossover character, uh, Morgan, from the original show. Right. Curious to see how they're going to do that, considering this this is set back at the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. And you know, when Rick met him in season one and on the regular show, he his son, him and his wife and son were together. So it's kind of like I don't know how they're going to work that into the mix. Obviously, they're going to have to have the wife and the son on somehow. Yeah. So. Yeah, or, I tuned out. Some plausible explanation of how, how he <laughs> ended up there. You know. I tuned out like after season four. I think it's just I don't know. What? It's, it's, it's like a lot of people have. They got kind of sick of it, but you know, I yeah. Enjoy it still. I mean, it had its, its its epic episodes, but then a lot of it was just um, it was just slow and boring. I like Megan. He's uh, you know he's he's an evil bastard, but he's he's just very enigmatic and and such a it's a, it's a cult of personality. That's why he. Attracted followers, I guess. He's just a very enigmatic and and magnetic personality, even though he's evil. All right. Well, let me put like you on the spot, Dean Morgan. Mm-hmm. Let me put you on the spot, and uh, we can we can move on from there. Um, right. Fan films, considering this is a fan film podcast. Yeah. What 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 fan films are you are you uh, aware of, if if any? Uh, well, you. You know, you were doing it for a while, and so I was kind of going along with some of the ones that you were showing me, the, the Indiana Jones, uh, um, I can't remember, was it the, the Lord of the <laughs> Jiminy? Huh? And then um, there's a couple Star Wars ones you sent me, and it's to me it's, it blows my mind how good these are. I mean, oh, there's a, a really good Batman one you sent me, too, that was... Uh, Walter King's Video son, uh, Andrew, was the yeah. Joker. In the okay, movie. okay. Yeah, that was... That was um, amazing, and unfortunately, he, I guess, took his own life a couple years ago, but... Yeah, that's and, correct. And I, I knew him as Boner Stabone on uh, Growing Pains, but he was actually a really good Joker. Yeah. Yeah, that was dead on. That's, that's been around for 15 years. It's been around a long time, if not longer. That's Sandy Calora. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember, there were some... 
I've seen some really good Star Trek ones too. And it's, I remember, you know, when you and I were in high school and you got a camera and, uh, you know, we were making our movies, but man, if we had the computers and the special effects, I mean, I know exactly. Now we do do better effects than you know some of the movies back in the eighties. So. Uh, I'm going to introduce a little uh, shit stain if that's okay. I mean, uh, ski, a little skeeter if that's okay. Absolutely. Oh, see if I can do it. A little skeeter. Are you there? Hey, yeah. What's up, man? Hey, you hear me? Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up, man? Hey, Mr. Skeeter. Uh, you know. We got Mosier, the Fridge, and Skeet all in one uh, phone call. We should yeah. have our head examined right about now. <laughs> the band is back together. Yeah. <laughs> By unpopular demand what? because no one requested it. <laughs> <laughs> when does the technology... Skeet is, Skeet is um, one of the first, uh, remember Skeet, you used to come over to my house and we used to watch these, uh, uh, what we now know as fan films on this like, uh, I don't know, 12 by 12 inch screen about uh, oh, yeah. o- over a decade ago. I I remember, <laughs> I remember some of them. Um, there's one in particular that I've watched a couple of times because it, it pretty much uh, went along with a love of mine, because I remember uh, not that long ago, Jeff just mentioned uh, Star Trek, but one of my other big loves, aside from that, is also Ghostbusters. And I remember, I think the guy's name was Hank Braxton or Paxton or something like that. And he did Freddy versus the Ghostbusters. Oh, it was actually quite good. That would be awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't mind checking that out. It was actually quite good. Who doesn't um, love the Ghostbusters? I mean, the real Ghostbusters, not these four broads in jumpsuits that, you know, pretend. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. But, you know. Yeah, that's, that's sorry. It's it's it's, it's Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, Dan Aykroyd, and Ernie Hudson are the Ghostbusters. End of story. Right. <laughs> right. right. Well, they, I mean, what, I mean, what they'll, those, you know, what those four, you know, getting a little bit off the subject now, uh, what those four uh, created was something uh, very different, you know. Um, I think, I guess the best way that I could describe how that film kind of affects me uh, affects me as, as far as uh, Ghostbusters and stuff like that is like, aside from Ernie Hudson, uh, Bill, Dan, and uh, Harold have worked together either on a Second City or Saturday Night Live and then with other films, and they've known each other for years at this point. And when you see the three of them all on screen and the way they all interact and stuff like that, I always had it in the back of my mind that the three characters, at least uh, Ray and Peter's characters, actually grew up together and then met Egon in college, something like that. So at that point, you know, by the time we see the movie, they know each other inside and out. It's It would be basically like, you know, <laughs> I guess the best comparison would be like, you know, the Ghostbusters would be like you, me, and Fridge. Um, and, of course, and, and Bill. And it's like they're just like best friends. So there's a certain um, chemistry and camaraderie between the others that would be very hard to create with, like, another cast. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was organic because uh, the guys were actually friends and colleagues before they did the movie. Correct. So, I didn't know there's a fan film. Though. That would be very interesting. I would like to check that out. Yeah. There, we'll just go to uh, fanfilmfollies.com. Yeah. Right, we'll do that. There's, yeah, there's there's still several out there. I mean, they're, they're still making them and stuff like that. Just like, uh, well, I don't know if they're still doing, I mean, I've been out of the loop for a while, uh, obviously, but with all the new Star Wars movies and stuff like that, I, I, I remember back, in, you know, like back when we first hung out and stuff like that, I remember they used to do uh, Star Wars fan films and stuff like that. And after a while, even George Lucas would do the fan film awards and stuff like that. Um, and I remember the only stipulation is that as long as as long as you don't uh, try and sell them, no one ever had any problem with it. Right. The thing is, with all the new prequels and, of course, all the new movies and the, the, the TV show Clone Wars and Rebels out – 
I don't know if people even still make Star Wars fan films anymore. Does, do you guys know anything about that? I suspect they do. I, I mean, I don't know for sure. Chris oh, absolutely. Know. It's just the thing is, so? most of them is like on uh, lightsaber battles. Yeah. It's like every uh, yeah. nine point nine percent of them is just one big lightsaber battle. I don't even post them anymore. people can do those special effects. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> But I haven't, I, mean, I haven't really, mm-hmm. I haven't really seen uh, like that. I mean, as, as far as like any other fan films, I haven't really. I mean, I should. I just haven't been able to have the time for it for some god known reason, <laughs> which I will not discuss here. <laughs> but I talk to you guys about it. Um, that you know, I haven't really been able to sit down and watch other uh, fan films. Um, but what I have been able to watch, and this is kind of cool. Uh, he's on Facebook, but it's it's uh you might you might have heard of him. It's a the production is called Bat in the Sun. Hold on, oh, absolutely. I've talked to uh, it's Aaron Shanky. I've talked to him a couple of times. Yeah, well, he does uh, superhero beatdown. Yep. And they they do a vote like you know who would you like to see to go up against each other and. I've watched some, uh, and then you vote on who you think is going to win. Like they've done uh, uh, Batman versus Darth Vader, uh, Boba, yeah. Boba Fett versus Star Lord, um, Spider Man versus uh, Darth Maul. Then they did what was it? They did one with um, Kick Ass versus yeah. um, Casey Jones of the Ninja Turtles, uh-huh. and they're actually not half <laughs> bad. But you, you get the vote, and then you see the the result of like who would win, and then uh, a little bit, a couple of months later on down the road, because you know it takes a little while to put these things together, um, you'll actually see the uh, the alternate ending. So in, they yeah. usually film like both, you know. So in case it gets a little closer or whatever, they go ahead and film both endings. So you know, basically they're not caught with the pants down. Sort of. Sounds like celebrity <laughs> death match at MTV used to have a little claymation celebrities battling each other. But <laughs> Bridge, I remember those. Uh, superhero oh, beatdown day. Oh, really good. Son. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, he's made a lot of fan films too. Huh. Yeah, they're very interesting. Uh, <laughs> Scars is a good. Have you seen that one? City of Scars? No. It's called uh, Batman City of Scars. Video of Scars? Fun. Uh, city? City? As in, I don't know, oh, New York City? City of Scars. Scars. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, I'm almost 50, so my hearing, you know, it's ready to watch it. Unless you're Sean Connery, then it's shitty. <laughs> Welcome to New York shit here. <laughs> that, look I, I, that look my grandchildren give me when I tell them to shit on my lap. <laughs> I, I so miss him. His last movie was uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. And he pretty much he, retired. It's too bad. Well, he he said because I remember listening to the audio, uh, the uh, audio commentary, of the movie, and which was actually uh, really good. There was a lot of cool stuff that they had in there, and um, one of the stipulations he said that Sean said that if the movie was a hit, he would come back, do the sequel, and continue on with his career. But he said if it went the other way, he's done. And you know, as history kind of suggests or shows, uh, he never came back. He's pretty much done. A lot of you can piss off. Yeah, he did, yeah. He did like, <laughs> voiceover for a well, couple animations, and then that was it. Yeah. Well, they did try to get him for the fourth Indiana Jones. Uh, oh, no, Crystal Skull. Crystal Skull, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They did, they did approach him for it, and he declined. And I don't know, for, for some reason, I don't think it was even really necessary in this story. Um, you know, they decided to kill him off, and I felt I don't think that was even really necessary to do that. You know, yeah, you they could put just... the picture in there and they should... the photograph of my movie. LaBeouf had there. Yeah, yeah. Said, I'm not doing it if George Jar LaBeouf is in it. So. <laughs> 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 
think about uh, the, uh, the new one that? Uh, what do you think about the new one that they're discussing and uh, possibly even Chris Pratt uh, perhaps showing up? I know that's all rumor right now. Well, I like Chris Pratt, but nobody, nobody but Harrison Ford will ever be indie to me. So right, right. Harrison Ford is definitely going to be playing Indiana Jones in the next one, but they're talking about Chris Pratt to play a character, kind of, you know, to carry on the franchise, I guess, so to speak. Uh, see that I see as long as, as long as Indy is Harrison Ford, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I. Yeah, Jeff, I can definitely say because I, whenever I um I find these uh. The announcements come up, and you know, you go to the official websites and stuff like that. Um, I think it was Kathleen Kennedy because she now heads Lucasfilm. She stated that they'll never, um, they they wouldn't continue the franchise with someone else playing the character. They said Harrison Ford, or she said that Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. No one else could do it. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think that I think what the plan was is that had the fifth one and the character of Mutt been received a little bit better, then I think you would have seen Harrison with a smaller role and then the movies carry on with Mutt, you know, being his son, would just carry on the franchise. Um, but you know, that's basically the plan and and I think that's, you know, what Mosher just said is that um, because they're definitely going forward with it. I believe Spielberg stated that it's the next thing that's on his schedule or schedule <laughs> um, <laughs> that, yeah, that once, once they're done, I think that the plan is that, you know, if the movie's well received, if the character's well received, uh, we'll see Chris Pratt step into the role, not as, Indiana Jones, but say his ex, uh, success. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. So, because I mean... Because again, he's not in enough franchises. Yeah. Chris Pratt. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. He's in a Foxy and uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park now. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, you yeah, I like Chris Pratt, though. He's likable. Shia, Shia LaBeouf is not likable uh, to me. So. Exactly. Right, right, right. I call him Jar Jar LaBeouf because he's just a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've seen those comments before, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a uh, sick, so, sick man so, with numerous mental health issues. So. With numerous? I don't think numerous you can even say numerous. They're beyond numerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what? Uh, in, so here we are being on it. It's been a long time. Here we are nerding mm-hmm. out. A couple of three individuals such as ourselves. So what do you guys think? And of course, be honest. What do you guys think about the new Han Solo movie? You know, just from the trailer and seeing who the guys being cast. What are your your impressions? Are you guys on board? Because um, I'm I'm hearing almost. I don't want to say like a lot of hate, but mm-hmm. I think the fan base right now is somewhat divided on this. Yeah, especially you know, like after some the last Jedi. Saying, Yeah, that's a whole no. other discussion. I wish I had more yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're in the in the we're 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 uh, for myself, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'll go see the solo movie. It, it looks interesting. I'm yeah. hearing Disney's expecting it to be a bomb. I'm hearing the guy that they cast as Han Solo is terrible. That they had to bring in an yeah. acting but coach. Opie, and, Opie, Opie Ron Howard or directed most of it, or some of it, yeah. or half of it. Ron Howard, like that. Ron Howard had to yeah. reshoot half the movie, from what I heard. But right, you know, exactly. I'll go see it. So, and I'll probably yeah, enjoy I, it. I, I mean, visuals. I mean, yeah, you don't want the visuals to carry the movie. Visually. I think it looks great. I mm-hmm. also like I also like the idea that the Falcon uh doesn't look like how it does now, you know, because it's like he it looks and it looks much more cleaner. So mm-hmm. it assumes you got to think he's like he said in A New Hope that you know I've done a lot of special modifications over the years, you know. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. so, you know, in time, you know, you'll see him fiddle around with it and make the modifications so we, you know, we, we see the ship, but it, to me, it's still the Falcon. Um, I like, 
I like Donald Glover, the guy that cast as Lando. That's that's going to be interesting to me. Oh yeah, I did not know that is actually Danny Glover's son. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah Merck. I, just like, I had no idea. I like that he he has to go by Donald Glover though, because if he just goes by Don, his name spells Don Glover. <laughs> Thank you. He actually, he actually alluded to that in one of his stand-up comedy specials. He's like, "Yeah, I realize when I go in by Don, if you put my name together, he goes, I am the Don lover." <laughs> so, I figure if he said it, it's all right. Oh man! <laughs> but um, and I did see some of the new toys from Toy Fair. And oddly enough, they posted uh, a two-pack of him and Chewbacca, which appears to be pretty much a spoiler of how they meet. And if any of you guys recall uh, or even know how Han and Chewbacca met in in the old books, uh, was that Han was originally an Imperial officer. Yeah, he was in like the officer training corps for the Empire, yeah. Yep, and he um, he was at Kashyyyk and was witnessing what the Imperials were doing to the Wookiees, and I guess that's when, uh, you know, he didn't like it, rebelled, and, you know, saved Chewbacca, and that's, you know, when Chewbacca gave him the life debt. So it does look like, just from the images that I saw from, from the toys, it does seem like that they are taking some of that... Um, from the books or maybe if they were even George's notes. I mean, who can really say? Cause you know, George never really mentioned how they ever met. And, um, I know that when you do, whenever they bring on someone to do a new star Wars movie or a TV show, they have full access to yeah. all the archives and everything else. So, I mean, they can cherry pick, they can do what they want. Um, like with Dave Filoni, who's been doing star Wars rebels, um great show yeah yeah i love it he um breaks into the archives a lot and that's where like you know he wanted to bring in grand admiral fron and it works he's the character you know he's not you know from what i remember in the books and everything he's cold and calculated and stuff like that so i you know i this fellow's very well done but there's other characters that he's introduced whether they're in for an episode or if they're recurring characters um, like he took a character that was originally a concept for Jabba the Hutt and made him a completely different character. So someone that was cool. originally meant to be, yeah. So like, um, yeah, cause it, whatever, I, I remember watching the, you know, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for Star Wars and I'm sure you guys did too, that whenever George would ask for a character, you would see like 10 or 11 different concepts of, you know, <clears throat> But each artist, you know, thinks, you know, has an idea of, like, what the character might be. And that's that's what they do. Like, whenever they're looking for a new bounty hunter or another character, they dig into the archives and see who's, you know, what hasn't been touched yet. And that's what they did. They took a character that was originally, you know, it was a concept design for Jabba the Hutt and uh, made him into a whole new character. By the way, Mike, you're a character I'd like to touch. Yeah. Hey, uh, do me a favor. You need to put me on mute. My granddaughter needs me. Okay. And this is, no be, this is something that's not going to be broadcasted. She's going to require for a certain activity. I'm yeah. Sure as long as in the solo movie, as long as they don't have uh, B. Arthur and Art Carney and Harvey Corman doing a musical number on the <laughs> cheek, you know, like, like they did at uh, exactly. the special, will be all right. Yeah, yeah. The only decent thing to come out of that holiday special was that cartoon, the first appearance of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, that was which is crazy actually mess. cool. They put that as uh, an Easter egg on the uh, the Blu-ray set of the first six movies. Uh, there's a you can um, there's a, an Easter egg of that cartoon on uh, one of the bonus <laughs> Christmas special. Is gonna lie. Yeah, the old holiday special. <laughs> Do you remember when the little, um, the little Chewbacca, the little Chewbacca, the little Wookie? Um, yeah. Watch, or maybe it was the older Wookiee was watching that uh, the the black lady singing there. Yeah, it was. He was supposed to be like watching a porno. Oh, I was I was watching a YouTube video on on the special itself, and uh, it was supposed to be like an erotic um, 
you know, before it's time, virtual porno or whatever. Shave the Wookiee whores. <laughs> <laughs> do you, have you seen this? Do you know the part I'm talking about? Yeah. What I'm yeah talking about. I, think I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I actually watched a holiday special again not that long ago. Some friends had a – my buddy Joe and uh, his friends would have bad movie night, and they decided to watch that. For uh, <laughs> God, that was awful. Uh, it was cool when we were kids, though, because it was Star Wars and it had that cast, and right. we didn't realize just how deliciously awful it was back then. Right, and it was deliciously awful, yeah. So speaking of Star Wars, here's the mm-hmm. problem I had of The Last Jedi. You ready for this one? Yeah. The biggest plot hole. All right, they spent the first movie um, you know, trying to find the map for Luke Skywalker. Mm. And then in the second movie, I mean, Luke Skywalker, right? He put the map in, inside, he put the chunk of map inside R2-D2 and then, um, and all that. And then in the second movie, he didn't want to be found. So doesn't that pretty much negate the first movie? Yeah, why would you, you know? put the map at all? <laughs> right, exactly. It made, like, mm. totally... No, I mean, I love the movie, but it made totally no sense. I enjoyed the movie, too. I had problems with a couple. I, the Princess Leia's uh, Mary Poppins moment floating through space was a little out there. But, uh, yeah. you know, of course, uh, it's, it's not really a spoiler. Everybody that's seen it, that's going to by now, you know, Luke right. Skywalker is dying. It's, although I suspect he'll be in episode three as a ghost. You know, right, ghost. exactly. Yeah, more than likely. Um, you know, it's like I, I'm still curious how they're going to address uh, Leia's death. It's got obviously has to be an off-screen death. Uh, they're not going to do any. Supposedly, they're not going to do any CG or or anything. Yeah, yeah so, that wouldn't work. I, I mean, it's it'd be, kill the character off with some dignity. Yeah, yeah. You know, we shall see how it goes, but um, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. A lot of fans were oh, they hated it. It's like you know what. He was just mad because it wasn't everything you wanted. It, you know, it's right, funny. exactly. All right. So what do you got? What do you got? Oh, I don't if know. If anything. If anything. Oh, sure. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I don't know a song. Oh, geez. Da, la, 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 dead air. Oh, so, yeah, so la, 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 la. I was trying to think of a song to sing, but it then one didn't come to mind. <laughs> da, 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 da. The lady from Eponine. <laughs> right. I think you get the bad elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, do, you have, do you have any interest in? Uh, <laughs> have any interest in Infinity War at all? I do. You know, the problem I have with the Marvel movies is I'm so far behind on them. I have uh, gotcha. I ha I've owned the Avengers on Blu ray for two years and I haven't set through it all yet. I, every time I start, you know, my five year old comes in and common dudes the television. <laughs> so I haven't I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Age of Ultron. I haven't seen uh Civil War. I haven't seen the two Iron Man wow. sequels. I haven't seen Thor Ragnarok. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy Two yet. Uh, I'd really yeah, like man. to go see Black Panther. I'm hearing it's fantastic, but it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, although I was told I don't need to see the other ones for, to follow that story. It's not it really right. Have it's much kind of on its own. Yeah, exactly. so I, I will probably go see that on the big screen. Yeah, everything. They're all really, really good movies, son. We'll enjoy them. Yeah. My nephew is a all huge right. Marvel fan, and he kind of gave me a list of the movies, the Marvel movies, and what order to watch them in, so they made the most sense. Gotcha. Okay. Maxwell? Yeah, yeah. Max is a, a comic book fiend, so I mean, yeah, he goes to Niagara Falls Comic Con with me every year, and he actually goes for the comic artists, and and you know comes home with uh, two hundred dollars worth of comic books. So the Phoenix <laughs> Comic Con is coming up, guests, so. right? Oh, is it? Any any good yeah. guests this year? Uh, let me bring it up real quick. You know, yeah, there's a lot of people and a bunch of guys. Um, Michael Bean from Aliens and Terminator and Tombstone is going to be there this year. Oh, quality. Uh, they're having a Revenge of the Nerds cast reunion, so they got like three of them so far. I have a couple more, I think, planned. Um, the guy that played, I didn't realize he was on Buffy, um, Mark Metcalf, but he was also uh, Niedermeyer in Animal House. Uh, okay, uh, the, the maestro on Seinfeld. 
So I'm looking forward to meeting him. Oh, and they got Cliffy and Normie from Cheers. Uh, John, John Rathenberger and George <laughs> yeah. White. Now, they had this cool awesome. thing where I uh, they only sold 50 tickets, and I bought one. Uh, I mean, it's have a beer with Cliffy and Norm. And so yeah. you get to go back go backstage and have a beer with those guys and have, like, a professional photo op with them. So. You said you bought one? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, so oh, that's I awesome. only had 50 available, so I bought one as soon as they went on sale. How much is that, if I could be so nosy? Mm, well, it was 115 Canadian, so it's probably going to be about 90 yeah. American. So, but, yeah. you know, those guys are two, two pretty iconic TV characters. and uh, You know, I got to meet Shatner last year uh, at Nickel City in Buffalo. I got a nice professional photo op with him. Yeah, um, that was probably, what, well, 50, 75? Well, you know, my cousin is a huge Shatner fan. She's been in love with him since 1967 when she was in high school. And she she paid like $250 for the VIP package to meet him. Oh, that's right. I and, think you told me and, that. Yeah, go ahead. And she yeah, she wanted the autograph, and she got to meet him, because she, was, she didn't want to do the photo op. And I, it didn't have a name on it, just a ticket. I said, well... I said, if you give me, you know, I don't have it on me in cash, but if you give me a week, I'll, I'll give you 40 bucks for it, and then you can recoup some of your money, and I'll get my picture with Shatner. So she said, yeah, right. that's cool. So, yeah, I got a nice <laughs> professional. So it cost me 40 That's not bad for a <laughs> right. legend. No, absolutely not. He's right. actually coming here to Rochester. They are hosting uh, uh, Kodak Theater on the Ridge is having a, a screening of Wrath of Khan hosted by oh, okay. Shatner. So Oh, quality. Oh, that would be so yeah, cool to go to. Of course, I missed that. Bucks. This is not horrible, but, you know. How much is it? 35 bucks. 35 That's not terrible. Yeah, or you can get the VIP meet and greet package. It's like 150 but I already met him. Of course. All right. Yeah, the guy has more money than God, and, yeah. So. Yeah, and this Phoenix Comic Con, they've got uh, Dave Bautista, I guess is his name, right? The wrestler there, oh, the Drax. Uh, Dave Bautista, oh, the wrestler Dave Drax Batista. from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See? Yeah, Dave Bautista plays Drax. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah also exactly. In that we got for twenty forty nine huh? briefly. What what was it? He was at a cameo at the beginning of Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I saw that. That was that was all right. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, not not bad. Um, you know, I no. I thought they did a good job. Uh, it was nice to see Harrison Ford because you know he's my favorite actor. Um, uh, not a fantastic movie, but like enjoyable. I, I enjoyed it. I thought they did a nice job keeping with that storyline and that dystopic future. And yep. And it's um, what's her tits there? Uh, I like how they uh, brought her in. I'm trying to think of the actress's name, and I can't. Mm-hmm. Who was the girl, the main actress in the original Blade Runner? Oh, uh, Sean Young. Yeah. Did her scene? Where she came in, her character came yeah. in, anyways. How they, that was that was pretty wild. How they computerized yeah, they all did that. Some nice computerized, yeah. It's amazing how they can, I, you know, the stuff they can do now. It's like we were talking about earlier. The movies we made when we were kids. It's people with their home computers can do better than some of the studios yeah. back then. I mean, look what they did with Grand Moff Tarkin in, in uh, Rogue One. Right, right. Wouldn't be I mean, cool if they do okay. like, um, yeah. People yeah. yeah. do like, uh, you know. Bring in John Wayne or Jimmy, you know Jimmy Stewart and James Cagney, all these old actors, and just uh, yeah. do what they did, um, like in Blade Runner and everything, and like make a movie out of it with all these old actors. I think that would be yeah, interesting. You know, they, know. they did a commercial a few years ago during the Super Bowl that had I think John Wayne and somebody else, uh, maybe Fred Astaire or somebody, where they kind of superimposed them into a modern commercial. You know, yeah, it's kind of interesting for just a two minute, but yeah, like a full length movie would be very interesting. Film. I don't know. So. It'd be weird. So I mean, yeah, of course, negotiate be, uh... the <laughs> rights of the states, but right, exactly. That that'd probably be yeah. a pretty penny. Who else is so Michael? Comic-Con? My... Huh? What's that? I was just wondering. You said uh, you were going to list some more Comic Con guests. Yeah, I was say Michael Rooker's going to be there. Oh yeah, he's he in Niagara Falls yeah. as well. Okay, very cool. Sean Gunn, I mean, I could care about him. Sean Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, his, James Gunn's brother, he directed the Guardians of the Galaxy's movies. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'm not familiar. Yeah. 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 And Tim, Tim Tim Curry, Will Wheaton, ming Ming oh, Tim Ming-Nay Curry, Wen. wow. Yeah. yeah, which I'm surprised. Didn't he have a stroke or something? 
Yeah, yeah, several years ago. He's wheelchair bound, as I understand. Has a yeah, hard time exactly. Around, but, yeah. Uh, Ming Nawen, you said? Uh, Ming Nay Wen, she's from, I'm probably really mispronouncing that. She's from Agents of the Sh- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. yeah, I know who she is. Yeah, that's a, that's about uh, it. Yeah, Niagara Some Falls other. got a good lineup. I'd love to come out to one of the big ones. Like You've been to San Diego Comic-Con, I believe, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's that crazy. Uh, I wouldn't mind checking out New York Comic-Con. I've, I know that's pretty wild, too, so I've had a few friends go there. Yeah, Javits. Yeah, I've been to that one, too. That's pretty good. You know, for, for close by Niagara Falls is pretty pretty good job. So yeah, and plus it's they got a lot of like you said they have a lot of guests. So yeah, a lot pretty, of celebrity guests, one. a lot of comic guests. Um, <laughs> Urkel is going to be there this year. Can I do that? Can I do that? Who else? I got uh, oh Jonathan Frakes, one of the few Next Gen cast members I've never met. So. Oh okay, that's I'll, I'll be getting him. One, yeah, that's one autograph I don't have. Yeah. So. Right, man. Uh, who well, else is going to be? Yeah, Michael Rooker, a um, bunch of wrestlers. Wrestling's big in Canada. So I got a lot of the old school '80s wrestlers. You know, yeah, Brutus Beefcake and Ric Flair, and it's, uh, it'll be fun. I know uh, a lot of comic book artists. Jim Steranko, I think, is uh, kind of a legend in the comic book uh, world. Right. Yep. Yep. So, uh, they do a nice job with the guests. It's, uh, it's always good. All right. Well, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Unless you got anything else, man. No, not me. I gotta. Oh, okay. Take my take a pee. Child out and no, take my child out and play outside. It's one of these nice days. Uh, It's not uh, a blizzard here, so. (laughs) What a a good father! What's it been there? Uh, It's weird. It keeps going from like snowy in 30s, and then it was in the almost 70 last week at one point. Oh wow! Okay, maybe we can uh, talk about this. Now it's back in the forties and fifties. So, <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm just sitting here in the sun at eighty degrees. <laughs> no, really. no, I think it's like fifty degrees out now. It's not that, not that warm out this week. All right, then. Um, yeah, we got Don Glut uh, next week. Um, we got uh, Maya Maya Glick. Uh, she did a fan film called Rain. It's a, a X. You're familiar with the X Men, right? You know who Storm oh, is. Oh, certainly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she did a Storm uh, fan film named uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Rosenthal. Actually, you're going to enjoy these. I'm going to send you the links right after we get I mean, you're going to enjoy Rain, too, but um, this Ooh. this guy did, uh, you know, Ash from the Evil Dead movies. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so he went, Ash. it's Ash versus, like, the the DC dead. So it's, like, all oh. these DC characters that are uh, freaking phenomenal makeup. So I'll send oh. this to you. Yeah. A bunch of other people. I'll send you a list. But, um, all right, man. It's been nice uh, cool. doing an inaugural uh, episode with you. And hopefully yeah. we can get the fanboy Will on here and uh, you can talk with him and uh, he yeah. geek out together. Broke my cherry. I'm looking forward to uh, catching up with you next weekend. And then, uh, Mr. Glut, we'll get her done. All right. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Sounds thanks good. for doing the Fan Film Podcast, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, thanks for having me. Later.